Hi, the IT help desk of my workplace uses a rocket icon with all of their communication. So seeing this again and again in emails, I thought, hmm, that's something I can make a game of. And then I can put it in our IT self-service portal as an Easter egg. So you're now seeing how I created this game and um, I thought I'd make a time lapse out of it. So I got this free image of an IT workplace with a screen, keyboard and mouse and I cut it into these three beforehand and now I'm creating them as objects in the game. So these will be obstacles that the rocket has to evade. Now these objects should move, so I'm animating them. And if they are out of bounds to the left, they should reset to the right and come in again. Since they're uh, flying through the space, um, they could ro rotate a little bit and this should be random. So it looks like space junk flying around. I don't know why, but I, I dislike creating uh, collision polygons. <laughs> so I really desperately try to fit uh, standard collision shapes into these three things. And it it worked. Now let's create the rocket. Uh, I put in the sprite and the collision shape and then I try to create some movement to get it to point in the direction the mouse cursor is. Well, now it is facing in right the opposite direction, so we add pi to uh, compensate that. Now it's time for movement. Um, I calculate a movement variable and uh, try to move it, but we need something to multiplicate this. So we get a little movement speed, that's much better. But now the rocket is facing in the opposite direction when the mouse cursor is left to it. So I'm only using the Y component of the mouse in the future. Now I want to dynamically load the screen, the keyboard and the mouse into the game so that we can create new ob objects one after one and um, I kick out the static objects. I create a timer to create the obstacles one by one and the timer is set to five seconds at first. So one obstacle is created instantly in the ready function and then the next object is created after five seconds and every time a new object is created, 
um, the timer is set one second up. So the next object is created in six seconds, then seven, then eight, uh, until it reaches 20 seconds. But now there are always screens created. So I create a variable to count what was created last and I count it up. And first a screen is created, then a keyboard, then a mouse, and then again a screen because the counter wraps uh, after two and gets to zero again. Now we have to do the collision between the rocket and the objects. So at first I just uh, delete the objects when the rocket collides with them. But um, then I want to uh, damage the rocket. And when the rocket is damaged uh, four times, the game is over. Um, so I create a hut where you can see your life bar. And the life bar here will be a bit special. Um, it will be the telephone number of our IT help desk, which, which is 3939. And uh, one digit after another will light up when you uh, get hit. So uh, when you're game over, you, you're ready to call the help desk to fix your rocket. When you've successfully destroyed your rocket, uh, it should vanish, so I queue it for freeing. And then a game over message should appear. When you're game over you want to restart the game maybe so we create a try again message and you have to click on 3939 to try again um, this didn't work for me um, so i had to google what i did wrong and it was that i had to filter the mouse not to ignore it and then I put both labels on the try again GUI input and I have to filter for the right event when to when it's really clicked. Now every time you evade an object, um, I want to give you a 
little bit of score and um, I'm implementing that. First, the score must be shown in the HUD. And then I have to find out if you evaded an object and give you the points. Well, I just wanted to give you one point per object you dodge. So, um, but I made them smaller than 100. So they are counted multiple times every object. Um, we have to fix that. That's better, but when an object was passed and is set to the right again, it should be uh, marked as not passed again. It would be nice if we can better see that the object we just passed gives us the score. So I create a little indicator that shows up and should then vanish again. So I wanted to change the font color when uh, the indicator flies upwards until it vanishes. Um, but I wasn't sure how I get to this field custom colors font color. So I had to look that up and it's uh, with a set method and then it works. So the visibility will go away as it um, flows upwards and when the visibility is zero or smaller than zero, then I queue the object free. Now I wanted a background of stars that are flying by and uh, I thought an easy way to achieve this might be using particles and uh, create the stars in that way. And as we are in particles, um, let's create explosions too. Uh, so when the rocket hits some object, the object can explode. And when the, op the rocket is damaged too much, then the rec rocket will explode.
after the particle effect is to my liking, I create a timer that will uh, destroy the explosion object um, once the timer is run out. Uh, so we will have no explosions left after they are, they are done. All this done, the game is now playable. Uh, we can try to evade the space junk that's thrown at us and we get score for it. And when we collide with it, it explodes and we take dam damage. And after taking enough damage, our rocket explodes and we are game over. But we are still getting score, so we have to somehow recognize that we are in a game over state and that we don't want any score anymore and not create new objects and so on. I created a particle effect for the rocket as well because I wasn't satisfied how the tail of the rocket looks but I wasn't satisfied with the particles as well so I scrapped it and took the standard fire tail of the rocket. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.